All right. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv. I am here with the one true Niz, and you are watching uh, Is Daily Wednesday. On this episode, uh, on Newsfire, we have fake news in Hungary, sponsored by the U.S. On Skynatter, the digital police state test lab of China. That's a fun one. Did you read that one? Did you did you see that story? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good one. And then on Liberty Tech, we have the lifeblood of Africa is drones, literally. And then we have... We have more stories that Niz has picked, which do you, do, you, do, you, do you want to tell the studio audience the stories you picked? They're a secret. Okay. No, I can go they're through. Um, no, no. Oh, okay. I like the secret idea. News pushes okay. Bitcoin uh, will fund terrorists. Then uh, uh, I have, uh, let's see here. China's social media is enabling an Orwellian police state. Uh, then we've got uh, two to finish up the end because I really didn't know which one I wanted to do. Uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just one. F fooled Just you. One. Psych. Just Psych. One look. Yeah, uh, about Ethereum. Uh, and will Ethereum be able to fix the block? F fix, fix the blockchain. The blockchain. <laughs> well, yeah. well, you know, it's really interesting. Well, we'll get to it. I, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, the title is interesting. <laughs> the blockchain. Okay. <laughs> That's probably where you're running with that, right? Uh, you'll see. The okay. All right, because you took notes. You're like thorough, yeah. and well, I guess I took notes okay. in a sense because these are, well, so, many of these are stuff I've written stuff on. So, at any rate, we are ready to begin the first segment, and the first segment is newsfire. So prepare yourselves. Here comes the bump. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on, and what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat? or action of physical force learn from these stories. This is Newsfire, where we set your news on fire. So this, this, this is the story that gives us the title of the show, and the title of the show is Fake News War Weapons Are Cool When We Use Them. But really, this story is, it's about... It's about so much more. It's it's about, well, in a rich irony of ironies, it appears that the State Department is busy funding opposition media to counter the current Prime Minister of Hunger, Hungary, Hungary, right? Viktor Orbán. Uh, the Prime Minister is a supporter of President Trump and a close al American ally. So, so my question is, is why is the State Department funding opposition media in that country, given the cries of Russian meddling in American politics through alternative uh, media and social media? Why is the State Department doing the same thing? And <laughs> in opposition to an American ally. Come on. Right. Well, well, and it's because it's because Prime Minister Orban is uh, a vocal supporter of Trump. That, that's why. <laughs> that's it. That's... that's 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 the reason. I mean, that's that that is the explanation as to why. Let that so... sink in. Let let that percolate. <laughs> let that filter <laughs> through your cranium the, just the for State a few Department, moments. Okay. Right. Part of the executive right. branch, which is Trump is in charge right. of. For, for ill or for good, <laughs> President Trump is in charge of the executive branch. And the executive branch spending is working to undermine him openly. Spending your money. Spending your money. That they've spending stolen your from you. money. Right. To they've spread, robbed from you. <laughs> right. To rob from you. To spread fake news in Hungary to undermine an American ally who happens to support Donald Trump. Right. Right. So... We just so, talked. We actually we, we had just had a conversation about this. Uh, Matt and I, uh, fr Friday. I don't want to describe who Matt not, is. Not the same exact uh, st uh, story here, but a similar similar tone. But you're talking you about on say, your Friday show, Torchwood right, right, Report. Matt is the co-host uh, right. on the Torchwood Report, which is on LRN.FM every Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, right after Free Talk Live. We come on right after. 
Uh, anyway, we, we had a we had, just had a conversation about something very very similar to this, uh, because uh, I guess the Trump administration has halted money that would have been going to Palestine or something. I I, I don't fully remember exactly what it was, but the point of this uh, the, this uh, article that we had that we were talking about, um, it kind of tied in with Rand Paul, and I guess he has a new bill. That he has sponsored. That he's. I guess he. I don't. I don't know if he wrote it or co-wrote it or is sponsoring it. But there's a new bill. Rand Paul's tied to it. The article came out. It was about uh, uh, not funding, not giving American money to countries that hate us and burn our flag and yada yada yada. You know, my, my, my flag uh, and and that kind of stuff. So uh, it, it ties in really good to it because this is. This is tax money that they've stolen from the American people at gunpoint and said, you're going to give us this money because we're going to do good things with it for you. We're the government. We're the benevolent, loving government, and we're going to do such nice things with this money that if you don't give us, we're going to throw you in jail or kill you. Uh, so <laughs> the really good things that there turns out, oh, the you're, really good you're things just, that they're you're doing. Just, you're just getting all technical now. but right. it turns out the really good things that they're doing is funding opposition research in foreign company, uh, countries for... Uh, well, it's not uh, just opposition research. They're actually funding alternative media, opposition oh, media. Uh, wait a minute. So they're are actually they, putting they, out oh, news stories. Wait a minute. Are they posting fake news on Facebook that's, like Russians? That's, Exactly! They're, they're what Russianizing. They're, they're <laughs> Russianizing Hungary. It's more like it's more like the, you know, uh wow, did you see what the DNC did during that election? <laughs> With all that Russian stuff in it? We can totally do that. Right. <laughs> they did the State Department. They're like, let's let's do that. <laughs> Dude, did you see how they did it? We can do that. Yeah. So uh, in a Dear Colleague letter, Representative Andy Harris of Maryland decried actions by the U.S. that he said distorted the record of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, saying that the State Department's decision to put up funding for opposition media in the country amounted to meddling in the domestic politics of a Democratic ally. You think? You think? It's all too familiar. Is this Maybe. a, uh, am I having deja vu here? This I don't know. Very I, I, narrative. Did they bring in Putin's operatives to teach him how to do it? <laughs> Prime Minister Orban has been a vocal supporter of President Trump since early on in the campaign, and Orban's approaches to many policy issues closely mirror those of President Trump. So I don't, you know, I, 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 for me, the two major gets of this story is one, to watch the United States government basically trying to commit uh, fake news. Well, they're 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 using a fake news weapon, or no? Let me word it this way: weaponized fake news in a disinformation war. In the same way that they accused Russia of doing for the 2016 election. That is rich and unbelievably delicious to behold. But then the second thing is watching the government at war with itself. This is one part of the government openly attacking the other part of the government. And this isn't like Congress members, you know, voting for against this is this is the executive branch of government which the president is supposed to be in charge of going after the executive branch of the government now the thing is this this is this actually happens a lot but we don't get to see it but to see it so you can see what your government is like what all governments are like really so as long but, as there's not a a strong consolidation of power the government will be at war with itself. And I like that. I like when it's at war with itself. Right. Well, this isn't the first time that, that I mean, obviously, uh, I would have to definitely say that this is probably the, uh, in, in, in recent weeks, the most uh, egregious uh, example of that. But, I mean, you can go back even just to uh, November when uh, the Pentagon had that tweet that came out. Uh, I mean, like the Pentagon's tweets – uh, when they were, that that tweet that came out from the Pentagon's account calling did for Trump's resignation. Did you see what happened recently? Well, did you see what happened recently with the U.S. Army? 
Maggie, Maggie, whatever her name is, Mindy Kaling, whatever her name is, some celebrity starlet person. Uh, she put out a tweet calling out Donald Trump for saying he's very smart and stuff. And she put out a little sarcastic tweet in response. I'm like, very smart is what it said. And it was, I think it was a picture of her saying, like, I'm like very smart. That was a response to his tweet saying he's, he's super genius, smart. And the U.S. Army Twitter account liked the tweet. I mean, that's, that's this what is you the have world we on, live folks. in today, folks. This is this the is, world we live this, in today. <laughs> this is the world we live in today. So let's go to your yep. story. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I have just one one last thing to say about this. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All this all this Twitter Twitter tweeting and the the military and the Pentagon and the it's army hot, and isn't and, it? I can only imagine what my grandfather would think about all this. He's a World War II vet. And you crazy all, kids, get off my lawn! You imagine telling That's him like you imagine, imagine telling him that? Oh, the executive branch is so upset. They're so upset over a tweet. That was tweeted on Twitter. He punch you in the face. He <laughs> the would executive you. branch is upset over a tweet that was tweeted on Twitter that right. was liked by another Twitter account right. of the executive punch branch. Punch you right in the face. You crazy talking right me, man. Get away from me with that crazy talking. You're smoking the marijuanas, aren't you? <laughs> so go ahead, give us your story. Oh, uh, let's see here. Come on, you got it. You got it queued up. I do, yeah. Uh, Fox on. News is pushing that, uh, pushing, oh, pushing yeah. the Bitcoin terrorist narrative. Yeah, that's my title, uh, and uh, yeah, it, I gave it's it, that the, title it, it is what they're doing. Your title yeah. or not, that is exactly what's happening, and, and you're kind of seeing this push um, from certain people here uh, about that, and now especially with Fox News uh, calling it out, they say one of the latest ter- one of the latest tools terrorists are using isn't a new kind of bomb, gun, suicide vest, or other device that could kill and maim. The tool is Bitcoin. Look how, look how they're, I mean, they, they're, th- this isn't accidental. They're juxtaposing bomb, gun, suicide vest, kill and maim with the word with- Bitcoin. They right. are subliminally programming you to think of Bitcoin as being the enemy of civilization, the enemy of law and order. That's right. that's what's going Bitcoin on. Bitcoin is a terrorist. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> so it says anyway, go ahead. That uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin is uh, is Al Qaeda. Uh, but they're saying that because Bitcoin transactions can be completed uh, anonymously, Which uh, the virtual true. currency is an ideal way for criminals, including terrorists, to hide their financial transactions from government agencies and law enforcement. Except it can't be completed anonymously. Bitcoin is not an anonymous. It's not a private. Well, no, tool. Tool. sort of. It, it can, it can, but it can't. I mean, with Bitcoin, you can see, you can track individual Bitcoins, but I don't. I still don't think that you can track wallet activity so they can see i don't know i have to check they can on that see where, i'm, I'm where, pretty where, sure where, they can figure it out mm, perhaps and even if that's the case then there, there's there are other cryptocurrencies it's, like, it's not know, a privacy coin that's the point G-cash it's not a privacy Nero. coin right it's not a it's not a private it is not a privacy coin but the that's how they're building deep this. web is it, isn't using bitcoin they're using primarily moneros from what i've heard not that i'm on the deep web because i'm a decent law-abiding citizen a law, in quotes, abiding, in quotes, citizen, in quotes. What's going on with your in headphones quotes. there? You're like, right. you're yeah, I don't know. I have a loose connection or something here. I have to I have to fiddle with my mic um, after the show tonight and see if I can fix this. That's the, whatever the heck it is, the three-quarter I think jack. I the thing has something to do with the dead cat on your microphone. Yeah, it could be. It's all yellow and stuff. It needs to be washed. So, so anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Any, any, anyway, um, so they're they're afraid of the anonymous nature of cryptocurrency, and so they're trying to frame it as if Bitcoin is Al Qaeda. Uh, basically, in this uh, Fox News article that I got from you, Paul, uh, they go on to say that uh, following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, 
That's as far as I'm going to go here because you know you can already know what's happening. There, <laughs> here's what they're basically saying: Bitcoin. Huh? You must want another 911. <laughs> yes. That's really what this is coming out as. <laughs> you didn't have a problem with 3,000 people dying, did you? On right, American right. soil. That's you know, why you uh, use Bitcoin. Uh, get out. Right. So uh, for me, for 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 me, what I see is, and I and I've seen the two kind of narratives that have emerged. I don't know if you read my editor's note on this, but uh, what what they're doing here, Fox News speaks to the conservatives. So the Fox News narrative is Bitcoin is terrorism. Bitcoin is uh, you know it's 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 going to break down society. It's it's going to break down law and order, and the conservatives are going to beg the government to regulate cryptocurrencies in general. And then the narrative to the progressives, I mean, if you go to the progressives and you say, it's going to break down law and order, like, like kill. But now <laughs> if you go to the progress, if you go to the progressives and you say, it's, uh, it's enabling the rich to exploit the poor even more than they've already done. It's enabling the rich to hide their wealth and avoid being taxed so that they right. can pay for the poor. Please, please, government, please tax cryptocurrency. What, what do you think? What do you think the odds? What do you think the odds are that in the next presidential election there are demands to see copies of people's crypto portfolios during the presidential? Oh, you mean right. people running? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so like we want to see your tax returns. Seventeen bitcoins. I want to see your ledgers. <laughs> <laughs> right, Give right. Me your ledges. Right. Where's your ledges? I'll need your well, seed I know they phrase, don't have ledgers, please. But... What's that? I'll need your seat, your wallet seed phrase, please. Yes, yes. Please. He refuses. I don't even know what that means, refuses but... to disclose his wallet <laughs> seed phrase. What's he hiding from the American people other than his <laughs> privacy? <laughs> right, right, right. And see, it, 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 there, it, there really is some substance here to this because. Governments in general and the banking industry, they're very fearful of, of all of this. I mean, I don't understand why the banking industry itself would be. You would think that the banking industry would be on board because there's why, much more accountability. Why, wait, wait. Why would the banking it's industry be on board with this? Do you know anything about fractional well, reserve I'm banking? Not, I'm not saying – listen, I'm not saying the Federal they, Reserve. Yeah, they're, they're, no, no, but the banks are tied into that. That's part of the system. They, You know how much free money they get? Through this fractional reserve, whatever, fractionalized, whatever it's called, banking, they end up getting free money that they can then lend out to you at interest. Right. So they get so, double dipped. So, so why wouldn't money. the bank be? All right. So why wouldn't the bank be like, hey, I'm going to mine. We're going to set the up. We're going to have a is, bank. We're going to set up a mining. And we're going to set up a mining. Uh, uh, a mining setup at our, for at our at our bank, and we're going to make. Dude, that was like. Forty dollars, like three weeks ago, is like forty bucks to transfer a bit. You had six dollars in your it's, wallet. It's come you down wanted to now. send it to me. It would cost you forty six dollars. It's still stupid. I have. It, it's oh, yeah, like twenty five yeah. bucks, twenty four, twenty five bucks, twenty two. It's been hovering in the twenties. Now, yeah. I mean, it's retarded. Yeah, I'm not a huge Bitcoin fan myself. I'm. I don't even know if I'm a huge Bitcoin Cash fan myself. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a crypto whatever cryptocurrency expert. By the way, I do recommend I've been pushing this on the headlines uh, that you may have missed, which is every Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, personal Facebook page. And uh, have you watched it uh, on the Sovereignty Network Facebook page, Crypto Corner Live? Uh, with, uh, uh, I with saw Kurt like two Jr. seconds, two seconds of of it the other day. Ah, uh, it's worth watching. Good show. Really <laughs> like it. But anyway, he he knows a lot. He'll he'll if if you're like me and you don't know a lot, he's a good guy to listen to. You you learn a little bit more because you mentioned stuff that I don't even know. What did you say about seed something? What the heck was that? Oh, it's how you you're back up your wallet. Okay, it was I don't seed know phrase. That. It's like a bunch of random words. Oh, or, I know what a seed phrase is. I have so seed phrase. Have a wallet, and you get another wallet. You want to, you know, make sure that your yeah. funds are available in the other wallet. You can use your 
Yeah, your seed phrase. Anyway, though. The, the, I actually the, have that, yes. The thing here with this is that government has a legitimate, and 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 like you said, like the, I guess the banking industry. I, I was thinking of more like your local bank. You know what I mean? And like local the local bank the, is the tied bank, into and, the system too. Right. They and I'm not I'm not disputing that, but I'm saying that they they could have uh they can have their cake and eat it too. The ones who can't are government and then like the World Bank. There they can't like that's not gonna happen. They can't have their cake and eat it too. No, there's too much no. accountability when it when it comes to cryptocurrency. There's no there's no way that you could uh uh that you as an entity that a government could manipulate the price. Yeah, they're they're really really although they're trying to get in, but I think they're trying to get in because they're trying to study it, figure it out, how to exploit it, how to destroy it. Well, I, I just I just had this conversation again with uh, on on the Friday night show on the Torchwood Report. We talked a little bit about this and about uh, you know um, it, it the way the government sees it is that it either has to benefit the government or it's got to go, or it's got to oh, go. Yeah. So the, the problem that they're going to have with cryptocurrency is that it's decentralized. And here's the issue with that is and, – and other countries are starting to find this out. That even if you even if you were to let's, – let's say they wanted to tax Bitcoin. Well, good luck with that because now you have to figure out a way to find out how much Bitcoin I actually have. You have to find out how much I have, how much I've spent, what transactions and where and all that. And good luck doing that. So let's just say let's just say that even if they went, let's say they went as far as to say, okay, since we can't do that, we can't, uh, we're not going to be able to tax it, we're not going to be able to uh, make it work for for us for the government. They'll come out and say, okay, well, we're going to ban we're going to ban these transactions at the at point of sale, and we're going to ban uh, exchanges. So you can't have any exchange activity from the U.S. and uh, and and no point of sale. People can still. Exchange Bitcoin from wallet to wallet. So it completely worked. There's no way at this point the ship has already sailed. Now, am I saying that Bitcoin is going to be the king or that there's we're, 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 that we can You're look talking, and see? What, but are you talking in cryptocurrency in general? Because honestly, I crypto, think Bitcoin's I, got other. No, issues. no, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying crypto cryptocurrency in general. The cat is already out of the bag. The only way that it's ever going to go away is if every single government on the face of the planet stepped forward and said, this stuff has got to go. Because if there is even one, if there's even one country where you can exchange cryptocurrency for their fiat currency or vi and vice versa, then it's not going to go away. Because in that case, I would just uh, take my U.S. dollars, change them into euros, change my euros into Zimbabwean dollars, and then buy my Bitcoin with Zimbabwe dollars and just reverse the transaction going backwards. Using a VPN from my house right here, you would never, ever be able to find me. You would never, ever be able to track my transaction. You'd have no idea where or how much any of that money you, you would be totally lost. You would be in the dark. Okay. I think that's a good place to end this. We're going to end this segment because on the other side, when we come back, we got a brief little minute, one minute break. And be sure you pay attention to these commercials and follow and do everything these commercials tell you to do. Not you know, voluntarily, of course. Of course, voluntarily, totally voluntarily. There's no subliminal messages going on in here. It's about a minute long. Gives me time to do another round of promotions for the show. And we're going to be talking about the Digital Police State Test Lab of China when we get back. You heard that right. Digital Police State Test Lab. And you can bet a lot of other countries are watching what's going on there, too. We'll see you on the other side. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora unless, of course. <laughs> You are listening to iState.tv's Is Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, 
please be sure to go to pay.istate.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. All right. I, I, I couldn't get to the button fast enough. We had uh, like two seconds of blackness there, but we're back. Oh, you sent me something here. Liberty Memes added a new photo. <laughs> okay. Complete oh, action using Facebook. Let's see what this is. Oh, golly. Let's see if I'm going to share this You got to go through all not. of that? I might not share this. You oh, have to go through news. all of that? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Send nudes. Did you see wow, the, did you see that, the big hubbub, up, the it, big it, controversy? What's that? Did you see the controversy, the big controversy about H&M there this past week? Yeah, it's either oh, this week or last week. You know, I mean, come on. I, I know what you're talking about. And yeah, I mean, that's, I'm not that's what that's a parody. That's what that's I a parody. I'm going to say that they're stupid. <laughs> they're like, really? Uh, I don't really? Know. Come on, dude. You, I don't know. You, it's a kid shirt, the... man. It's kids. So what are you telling me? Are you telling me that just because, just because someone is not, a, I'm not is saying a, that. is a POC, is a person of color, a just because someone color. is a person of color, they can't they wear can't a shirt, wear a shirt says, with the word can't monkey see monkeys, on it. can't have a monkey on it, can't say monkeys because no, I'm not that's saying racist. that. It's not I'm racist. I'm just saying kids, you're running a multi-million dollar company, and you understand the climate around you. Maybe you look at that and you're like, hold on, Frank. Maybe we don't put that out. out. <laughs> or maybe you looked at it and you're like, Frank, put that out because there's going right, to be a buzz. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I get your point. I, I, mean, I think, you know, I think it, that if, if, there were, if, if you're a person who is offended by – if you're somebody who saw that H&M thing – I'm sorry I derailed everything for this H&M thing. <laughs> yes. Well, I did it inadvertently. <laughs> If well, no, someone because you, you sent me I the did. link. I set you up. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, you're pulling you, me in, man. This is Skynetter, and on Skynetter, we're talking about kids with monkey shirts. Right. right. So you're a person who is offended by that. If that's something that offended you, regardless of your color, you're the racist because that thought was wow. in your head. You weren't thinking about a little kid. Wearing a shirt with a monkey or monkeys or the word monkey on it and what that means to that little kid, you were thinking in your stupid racist head that that shouldn't be like that because, oh my God, monkeys, you're the racist. Dude. <laughs> well, you know, I I, I'm gonna do a little virtue <laughs> signal here. I'm gonna do a little virtue signal here, and okay, I saw this thing pop up. I saw the picture and I thought, oh, that's a cute kid. Oh, that's a funny shirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh oh that oh yeah all right i'm gonna play the video bump which means we're entering skynetter now is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply the lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynet covers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondry. Yeah, it's a shame you couldn't hear the video bump because you heard my daughter asking, is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all uh, to... Uh, put them in uh, to use us as lubrication for their factories. You missed that. You didn't get to hear my daughter say that. I heard it so, before. I just didn't hear it this time. Well, I know, but it would help if you heard it now. Then it would be like, it would be an experience. It would I be, could be part of the show then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could be like clearly a, not. You're like, hey, we're doing Skynetter, right? Right? <laughs> this is Skynetter. Hey, let's talk about kids with monkey shirts. Hey, <laughs> why not? So this is China creates digital police state test lab in, well, here's a word, Uyghur region. <laughs> Is that is that that's really how you say it? Did you look that up? Y G H U R. It is pronounced Wigger. So all right, we went from monkey ah. shirts to Wigger. All right then. <laughs> well, all right, that's the show. Cause sure. that's the show. 
hoax. So it seems that the so-called autonomous region of Uyghur, I don't know how autonomous it is if you read what I'm oh, wait a ready to. So, so yeah, wait a minute. I know, I know. Wait a minute. I know, so I know. People, I know. people live there, no, are they called? Uyghurs. <laughs> yes, okay, all right. Oh, I thought you were, I, ca- you were caught clear. up on the autonomous thing, given what's going on there. So... <laughs> It, it seems that some of us are 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 over the age of 12 and we can handle a word like Wigger. That would be me. Uh, so it seems that the so-called autonomous region of Wigger, which is within China's borders, has become a digital police state laboratory with the Chinese government employing more than, just, just take this in, 90,000 personnel to track every scrap of data they can on the people living in the region. So they're doing this using a number of digital techniques. They're creating a super digital police state laboratory where they could test out methods and gear on the Uyghurs who have no major friends among the general Chinese population. So nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be enraged in China over this. And this story that I I'm 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 talking about here is from the Liberty Web and their headline is AI and facial recognition, China's surveillance society experiment underway in, ready? In Uyghur. Yes. Right. Well, and they're Hitler. actually, they're actually even comparing this like to Hitler, or like a Hitler. Oh, it's, it, it, it deserves to be. It's like if Hitler had what they had, they'd be like, wow. Hitler would be like, oh man, we're amateurs. We're totally rank amateurs right. compared to you. So guys. I saw this, I saw this, um, this article. And the first thing I thought was, who are the Wiggers? Like, who are these people? Who are, who are they? Um, apparently they're a Turkic ethnic group living in Eastern and Central Asia. Primarily and, Muslim. Uh, right. They don't identify themselves as Chinese or part of China. Uh, there's like a, 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 a separatist and independence movement. Yeah. Um, sep- uh, I guess the, uh, uh, one claims that, uh, they, they, they support a pan Islamic vision, uh, exemplified by the East Turkestan Islamic movement, while others support a pan Turkic vision, such as the Eastern Turkestan liberation organist, uh, organization, organist, but, uh, I like that better. right. I organist. wish it was just uh, an organist. I can handle third, organists. A third, totally third group. handle organist. Would like uh, a totally separate state like uh, Wiggerstan. Wiggerstan. Uh, Wiggerstan. That's right. I know That's... Wigger, and now we know Wigger. Uh, Must have been wearing some sort of Wigger suit. But regardless of uh, of, of what their vision is uh, for the region, they one thing that they all agree on is that they are not Chinese. So you can kind of see, you know, I mean. Put yourself in the put yourself in the seat of a communist dictator uh, dictatorship, and uh, you know you can kind of see why they're. Uh, well, they're they're an inconvenient uh, truth. That's for sure. <clears throat> they're not meshing with the program. Right. They, they may have that, uh, collectivist thought, but it's not Chinese collectivist thought. So right. No, so absolutely not. Of, they're they're actually some of the information that they that they've been collecting are things like uh, whether or not you have a job, uh, if you have a passport, uh, whether they pray. They want to know if you pray and when. Yeah. I guess the, the more you had a pray, the more you may be radicalized. Right. And then the state then decides whether a person is safe or dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what What do you think they do if they deem you as dangerous? They just politely ask you to not be dangerous please don't be dangerous yes they, i think that's what they do they send you a sternly worded letter Stern, <laughs> you know what they have a vote in the un and they declare you an act of cowardice that's what they do yeah. Hun uh, Chun Go is an act of cowardice what, what do you mean the person yes uh, he's a dangerous person well, act I, of cowardice Right, but but here in reality, whenever you have communists and whatnot, they always take you to some type of gulag. Uh, yeah, so anybody there's... who's deemed as dangerous gets taken away to a political edu- uh, education center. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete with You're guard get towers. Get electric... Right, right. Complete with surveillance and guard towers and electric fences, uh, and then 
they decide how long you stay there and if you should be let go. So, well, once you're no longer a dangerous person or you're right. dead. In which case, you're also they, you know what the no best part is? a dangerous you know person. That, here's the best part is they don't even tell you why they're taking you. You have no idea why they're at your house banging on the door at 3 o'clock in the morning and why your whole family is getting ripped out of the streets Dude, and the rain at gunpoint. If you, if you haven't done anything wrong, you don't have anything to fear. That's right. That's that's the logic. I guess so they, there you they, go. I, I'm, the I'm actually state. I have one more one more bullet point here. Is oh, that okay. the, the Canadian newspaper The Globe and Mail reported on the severe surveillance on Islam, Islamic mosques and how each individual's thought patterns and, D, and DNA data are recorded. Thought patterns, especially amongst children, where there is a strict rule to create a Chinese-speaking environment at school, and they are not permitted to return home. During the school term, well, because yeah. they know that, that if you want to if you want to retake that region, the only way to do that is to get to the kids. It's the kids, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I I just saw a story recently. Where was it? Oh, dang it! Some country has just out. Oh, Iran. Iran has just outlawed teaching kids English. I wonder why that is. Yeah. They want to make sure that they don't have access to alternative media. I'll just say. Yeah, they're having some problems over there, aren't they? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a story in and of itself actually. We we spoke that we spoke about it actually on Is Daily Monday. We we went in depth about what's going on in Iran and yeah, there may be some U.S. involvement there, and I don't know who the good guys are or the bad guys are over there. there there's a I, I lot don't of bad there, guys. I don't think there are any good guys left. I think every I think every player that's left on the table right now is a bad guy. Uh, in 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 some well, certainly right. from our perspective, right? <laughs> I'm saying even <laughs> I'm saying even even mean? the good guys are club. good guys. It, the tight. Wait, wait. What's the title of the show? Okay. The right. title it's of the okay show is Fake News War Weapons Are Cool When We Use Them. So if it's our tribe, we're the good guys. That's it. That's It's as simple as that. If it's our tribe, our club, or whatever, we're the good guys. It's as simple as that. Let, let's get to your, your story that you've selected for this segment. What well, continues on that same, on that same uh, uh, trend there that we were talking about? Um, it's that... The other article that you had uh, listed about uh, Chinese social media is enabling an Orwellian police state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of I a mean, continuation of all of this. Yeah, because when I was, what they're going to do to the Wiggers, they're going to do to everybody. Yeah. When I was sorting through the news that day, I think this, I think this was Tuesday, I, I found both these stories. I'm like, man, it's just right, right two in a row that, that were both in China. And well, I'll let go ahead, take it away. Let me hear what you got. Well, it's just it, it's just that they're like 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 I had said before, they're continuing to expand, uh, to continuing to expand electronic surveillance. It's well, a continuation doing, of the same policy. What they're doing actually is uh, so their 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 big social companies are really working closely with them, and they're actually trying to help authorities like get advanced warning when, when people might be gathering, when people might be protesting, when there might be dissent so they can right. predict the size well, and, of and crowds the thing, and their movements. The, th and, the thing to be very clear on with all of this is that, you know, you said they're, that they're helping. I don't know if they really have all that much of an option. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. That entity is helping another entity, but both entities are, the same organ they're all part of the state believe you me you don't have in china and actually it's it's interesting if you want to start a business in china like a mom and pop business you you can start one in china a lot easier than you can in america there are very few regulations at the lower levels you could set up shop in the middle of the street they don't, they don't have a lot of restrictions. It's really, really easy to start a business in China. Once it gets to a certain level, however, then you got to make some deals with the devil. you got to make deals with uh, organized crime 
and with corrupt government officials. So when you're getting to this level of, of size, this ginormous size, yeah, you are the government. But you know what? Right. That's not unsimilar to America. Although maybe the marriage is a little closer in China. But really, in America, is it is it though? Is it though? Unless you, what's is that? it though? I mean, it, is it is it? I mean, you said that it's you know that relationship is a lot closer in China. But is it though? I mean, if well, you look and, and remember what was going on with the NSA and Operation Prism and how they had duplicate servers and you had all this craziness going. And I mean, it, when when they come out and say that you know like you know when they come out and you know it's revealed that they have these. It's not they didn't put them in yesterday. They've had them there for years, for years. The amount of data that was collected on every uh, man, woman, and child is is absolutely staggering. It's incomprehensible. And then uh, it, it, it's played off like as if these were, well, they just put them in yesterday. They haven't quite turned them on yet. Well, let me tell you, James, Cl when they had that, when when they had that hearing on Capitol Hill. And with Clapper, and that we're asking him about the you know surveillance on American citizens, his forehead would not have been dripping so much sweat if they put them in yesterday and didn't turn them on. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I I am I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Certainly, maybe uh, maybe I shouldn't, but uh, yeah, if if you get to a certain level of bigness, you're going to have to be beholden pretty strongly to the state because without the state you probably aren't as big as you are anyway so there has to be a, a mutual relationship going on there that you know we'll make sure that you don't get competition you make sure that we get the kind of intel and and, right. and the stuff that we need you know what's and interesting maybe, about you know what's interesting yeah, with this conversation uh we can Kind of go to the idea of state capitalism. So they call it what they have. And it's just communism. This is communism where some people are allowed to own a little bit of stuff. You mean <laughs> China? The, the, right, they, right. They're, they're calling that a mixed market. Right. State capitalism. <laughs> right. Right. And you, you, you actually, um, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago, there was a little bit of a run where we had people openly discussing this. So if you want to know what what uh, your lawmakers and what your government has in store for you, um, you have these politicians and so they're salivating over what they see in China right now. So just be on the lookout because that's going to pop up over the next couple of years. You just watch. Mark my words. You heard it here first on before Easter. anywhere else. Right. That this is what to watch. This is the red herring. This is I'm telling you right now. This is the red herring. When when you start hearing uh, discussions about state capitalism on CNN and Fox News and the MSNBC, and it's coming from your lawmakers, that's when you know. Head for the hills. If you got a bunker in your backyard, now's the time, buddy. <laughs> and you know, if you go to iState.tv, I regularly feature items about prepping, so you can you can learn stuff like. There's a story on from the other day, a video, how to make diesel fuel. And it's how they were making diesel fuel in Syria during the Civil War. Uh, that's a good video to watch because you never know when you're going to have to make diesel fuel. I think they were using melted plastics or I don't even know. But anyway, uh, just go to iState.tv and, and we've got stuff there for you. So we're going to we're going to go to our last segment. So that means one more break. It's a minute break. And, and as usual, make sure you follow everything that the commercials tell you to do because otherwise, maybe, what, what, what is the determination of a uh, uh, good or what, what was that term? Determination that China's made about the way. Safe or dangerous. Okay. You don't want to be put in the dangerous category. So if you want to stay in the safe category, do what the commercials to tell you to do. When we get back, we're going to be, our top story is going to be the lifeblood of Africa is drones. Like, literally. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.iState.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well 
Hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.istate.tv. You is in your name. We'll meet you there at u.istate.tv, where video meets the iState. It's all fear and loathing in Stadium on State Page land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now and be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You are listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Sky Knitter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. And we're back. We're in the last segment. So, I mean, this show, really clearly, the theme of iState.tv, if you look at it and you see the little, little banner thing, awareness, hope, action. So we... <laughs> We hit you really hard with awareness, I guess, for the first two segment. Well, well, this is this is the hope and action part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom. There's cool stuff happening. There's a lot of cool stuff happening out there. And even, you know, in the beginning when we were talking about the, the Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency and their efforts to try to control it, you know, there, there's there's. They, they are not assured that they're going to be able to lock that down. And I put money on them not being able to lock that down. So we'll play our video bump, and then we'll get to our first story. Are coercive associations being outmoded by technology? On Liberty Tech, we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations, even large-scale centralized operations, may be numbered. We are back, and wow, I can't find the link. Am I in the wrong place? Where's the? F oh, there it is. Ha. I couldn't find the story. Uber for blood being powered by drones in Africa. This is a story that's on Tweaktown. Tweaktown.com. Did you read the story? Tweaktown. I read the story. Read the st I got. I have bulleted notes. Okay, give me your bulleted notes. All right, bulleted notes are bulleted uh, notes. East African country of Rwanda. Drones are flying through the sky with medical supplies like blood. Thanks to a partnership between the Rwandan Health Ministry and the drone startup Zipline. Zipline has already used drones to deliver over 5,500 units of blood to aid crews working through remote areas where medical supplies are near impossible to find. Want me to continue? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All, the service is working with uh, 12 hospitals that are all being accessed by the drone network. With these hospitals now able to provide treatment and life-saving aid to over 5 million people. Drone five deliveries million. make 5 million is a lot. Uh, drone deliveries make sense when you think that hospitals need a constant flow of fresh supplies on a regular basis, but without proper infrastructure available, taking to the skies is the next best even better thing. Deliveries of blood through drones has seen delivery times drop from a huge four hours to just 45 minutes, according to the Rwandan government. The drones can fly through the skies at up to 60 miles an hour with the delivery network capable of notifying hospital staff when the drone is near its drop-off point. Once the drone reaches its destination, it will drop the delivery of supplies mid-flight, where it then goes back to its cruising speed as the package is safely delivered with a parachute. That's pretty cool, man. That yeah, is, it's awesome. I mean, that's great. See, see, there's good that's news out tech. there, folks. It's hopeful tech. You didn't come. You didn't think that like all those you know, UPS testing drones to deliver packages and Amazon testing drones. You didn't think that was all just for delivering packages. Well, you know, all those tests and stuff gather information for cool things to happen like this. Yeah, exactly. Yay, or, capitalism! Yay, also, capitalism! <laughs> well, it's not actually capitalism because. Well, it depends on your definition of capitalism. If you want to say capitalism is the free market, then you can't say this is capitalism. This is Close enough, yay man. mixed market. <laughs> <laughs> yay mixed mixed market yeah. did that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but it's, no, it's a good story. It's it's 
how drones can be used to reach people in remote areas and get life si- life saving supplies and crap right. to them. Right, right. That's pretty right. cool. They're not I mean, just I'm for not, cool pictures of the beach. Who they're knew? not just for <laughs> Well, I like cool pictures on the beach with my drones, so so what's your story? Give me your story. Actually, you I, I want to tie this into something that's that's going on right now. This right. Uh, U.S. Tie U.S. short U.S. shortage on saline bags for the hospital. Wow, what's up with that? How, how, I mean, do how does it how does it come down? Bags. How am I going to tie it in? Well, no. Okay, well, that's a good deliver question. Deliver them with drones. Deliver them with drones. That's well, what I'm saying. Don't you... Oh, they're just missing sailing bags, not sailing, sailing bags. When you said sailing bags, I am no, no, no. It's like the whole. Sailing. It's like the whole thing. I, I guess the uh, a large portion of uh, those the, the sailing drip bags that they give you when you go to the hospital, right? Large portion of those are manufactured in Puerto Rico, which, as you know, was uh, devastated not by a doing hurricane. Well. Still not doing right. well. And so because uh, because all of these manufacturing plants aren't back up and running, there is currently in the U.S. a shortage on saline, prepared saline bags. Hospitals just don't have them. They're running out. I guess they're – some hospitals are saying that they I, – I just just watched this on the on the news today. Some hospitals are, are saying that they only have enough to Wait, last until February. You watched the news? I did, yeah. Oh. I know. I still do. Oh. I still do it. How do you do that? I can't. It's like, ooh, it's like watching somebody. You know what it's like? It's like there are two people standing in front of a chalkboard. And the one person is running their fingers down the chalkboard while at the same time they're paper cutting the person beside them. That's what watching news is like for me. Right. Well, I quit. Here's what I did. Right. It, 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 it came to a tipping point. Okay. Where I was either going to smash my TV or I was going to stop watching this crap because I already couldn't take it. So I stopped watching. I, I stopped watching. I quit. I stopped watching. I, I quit uh, Fox News and all that did crap. You rage on, uh, quit news. You rage. I quit did. News. Yes. Yes. I rage quit the news and uh, did it cold <laughs> turkey. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It was probably maybe five or six months where I solely just got things from the internet, and my television was used strictly for entertainment purposes. And uh, just recently, this past maybe week or two, I started delving oh, back in. Oh no! Delving no, back in no, to see no to see how angry. there's some funny stuff, man. I'll tell you right now. Oh, I, no, I get a no. kick out of Trump, dude. I get a kick out of Trump. Did you see his <laughs> recent thing that he had just had on? Did you, did you catch that like, by any chance? I didn't. When he, is he, it he the did fake the, news the awards? Did he do the fake news awards today? He was supposed to. Oh, I don't know if he did that or not. I don't know. What are you talking I was, about? I was talking about oh. the the big meeting, the big the big uh, bipartisan meeting. No, I didn't. No, I, no, you didn't, didn't see. It. He it. said I, he even got he even received letters from reporters telling him that that was the best meeting they've ever seen, ever. <laughs> it was awesome. He said that it was awesome, dude. Wow, dude, it was awesome. He's like they they actually re- on two networks they reported uh, they 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 did a pretty good job for about two hours, and then they got must have got the phone call that came down to told them hey, tell them hey hey back to the up. Russia thing. Right, back right. to the. So, I don't know. What are we doing? What are we doing with Trump now? Did he like he ogled his daughter? What? What? He knows. he overfed fish. What is it? What are we right. doing today? You know, right. Well, let's get it out there, man. Let's get it out uh, there. Got North Korea and South Korea to talk to each other. Ooh. <laughs> right. You know. Anybody could you know, have done I'm, that. You, you know, I'm not a not a fan of Trump, but I'm. No, nah, neither am I. I, I the only thing really I like not a fan of. Of the trolls, the, the state the, on state based trolls and how they're going after Trump. The but only anyway, thing I like about this, him this is the Sky only... Nodder, Netter, dude. <laughs> Go right, ahead, I'm, finish finish your Trump praise. Go ahead. I'm just saying the only thing that I really like about him is how much he pisses everybody off. <laughs> he pisses <laughs> everybody off. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I, I do enjoy Great. that. So so Very give us uh you gotta got you have to have another another Sky Netter story. Come on. I do. I do. I, we're not in Skynetter anymore. I thought we're, yeah, we're, we're in Skynetter. I mean, not Skynetter. I'm sorry. I keep saying Skynetter. No, we're in Liberty Tech. 
Give right. me the another Liberty Tech story. I apologize for saying Skynet. Ethereum. Now this isn't dystopian Ethereum. tech. This is hopeful tech. Now. This is good. Stuff. Ethereum. Uh, oh yes, yes, that's right. Ethereum is exploring a fix for blockchain's performance problem. Ma, ma, ma. Okay, I'm waiting. I have a take on this. I'm gonna wait until I hear your take. Go ahead. My take is that I don't think anybody has it right right now. Like we were just talking before about the ridiculous uh, fees and stuff for Bitcoin. It was as high as almost fifty, forty, fifty dollars just a few weeks ago. Now it's come down about twenty five bucks. You got six bucks. You want to send it to your buddy? You got to pay twenty five dollars right now if you want to send them six dollars. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, not usable in any way, shape, or form, uh, other than for what's happening right now with it, which is speculation and day trading. Uh, and Ethereum is in the same is in the same realm. You have this article coming out. Ethereum Ethereum explores a fix for blockchain's performance problem. Three weeks ago, Ethereum was ground to a halt by crypto kitties. I mean, I love cryptocurrency and blockchain, but I'm also a oh, freaking realist. Okay. I thought you were gonna fantasy, say. Man. I thought you were gonna say I love crypto kitties because it's funny because I actually have it. I have it on my screen and open right <laughs> no. now. Oh, you do not. You have a crypto yes, kitty. Yes, no, no, no. I, I went to the, <laughs> I went to the website just to see. You have a no, crypto the, kitty. You're <laughs> digital cats. People are paying money, dude. You, you can have a crypto kitty. <laughs> wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. You gotta. You have to understand what's happening here, okay? All I'm going to remember from this whole show is you have a crypto kitty. Crypto is, it. It's lucrative, man. It's lucrative. Wow. What do you cat raise the was, kitty up and then sell it? Cat was sold on crypto kitties for over a million dollars. What? Yes. How's that? <laughs> yes. Hope, what, what do you get for a million dollars? Here, here, here's, here, let me give you the crash course. In crypto kitties, okay. Okay, because I've been dying to hear about this, so this you now's the time. You collect and breed digital cats, and their DNA, their genetic makeup, is based off a of blockchain. So it's completely random, and there's all these different variations and genetic mutations, and you can breed this kitty to the other kitty and make uh, a unique kitty that has a you know, like you're not going to get two that are the same. You know what I mean? And people are going nuts over crypto kitties. You can breed these digital cats and sell them for real money. What, real? What, what, but what, you didn't answer my question. What do you get for a million dollars? What do you? What do you get? You get a somebody digital... bought a crypto kitty for a million dollars. What do you get for that? You get a digital cat. What? What's so special about that digital cat that it's worth a million bucks? I couldn't. I couldn't really tell you. You can't. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> like this kitty is got like, three <laughs> eyes. I don't. I don't. It's I, you know they got different kind of spots. You know I, they I have. I, wait, I gotta <laughs> go see this now. I gotta go see. Go crypto go kitties. I gotta go see what. So they actually look like something. They're 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 yeah, visual. Yeah, you could. Yeah, right, right, uh, right. This is incredible. Next week, by the way, I'm going to have scenes set up so that we can actually show stuff like on websites and videos right, and like, stuff. Okay. I don't have it ready, so I'm not trying to do it. But okay, so where's the one that's worth a million bucks? Oh, I have no idea. I have uh, no. Hang on, let me let me see if I can if I can find you an article or something. Just. Uh... What is Crypto Kitties? Crypto Kitties is a game centered around breedable, collectible, and also adorable creatures we call Crypto Kitties. Each cat is one of a kind and 100% owned by you. It cannot be replicated, taken away, or destroyed. What do you mean? Like the blockchain will exist forever? Right, they're, they're blockchain based. Once that, once that is written in the ledger, it is there forever. Not really. If you take out all the computers, it's done. Right, if the Earth was destroyed, like blown to smithereens by an asteroid, Crypto Kitties would be gone. But just because you smash your computer doesn't mean your Crypto Kitty is dead. So as long as one computer exists that has the ledger on it, it still exists. But the minute that you snuff out that last computer, your Crypto Kitty dies. Right, I just sent you the link Let's here. think about that. The people have spent 
over a million dollars. People buying have virtual spent cats over a million dollars to buy virtual cats. Seriously, I want to find out who these people are. I definitely want to sell to them. I'm feeling like I might have a good chance to sell some stuff. Just right. They're in a seller's market. Right. <laughs> but the new ICO, Nizcoin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I need three you billion. Know. The new ICO, Nizcoin. This is, look at this. this is a this is authentic pinky pinky finger now from a human being. <laughs> One of a kind. It'll never be destroyed. I don't know. So crypto. Uh, right. I, so uh, block. Yeah. They're, they're, the whole purpose of this was not about crypto kitties, but that I don't think any of the uh, any of the uh, cryptocurrencies that are that are out there right now are the answer. That, that's that's what we're kind of where I was going with this. You know, none of them. Yeah. No, I don't think them right now are this. I don't know. The, I, actually, I don't want to say that I don't know that none of these currencies are not the answer because there's so many of them. Who knows the the the. I don't know. I, I'm hoping it's not one currency. I don't want that. But, you know, that, that Preto's law, or whatever it's called, you know, where just a select few do way better than everybody else. Right. That'll probably happen. So it'll probably end up being just a few cryptocurrencies that are really, really uh, dominant. So, right. But, but, but no, I'm, nobody, I, as of right now, no one is addressing. Uh, properly has addressed the is the the issues, you know. I mean, like I said, I'm a cryptocurrency enthusiast. I I I do own crypto. I trade crypto. I I do all that stuff. Um, I'm not poo pooing on it, but I I, I just don't think. That, no, you're right. I'm not a poo pooer. I just don't think that. I just don't think that even the top. Let's let's say that it's gonna it, it's gonna you know mesh out to be like a top five. I just I don't know I don't even think those top five are 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 here are predictably in in sight right now. I I, I think I think the the underdog currency that's going to to rule is going to be Bitcoin. Now I don't you want you guys I don't want you guys to you know think that I'm biased because I happen to have over five thousand Bitcoins. I'm just saying I think that's the currency to invest in. Not because I have 5,000 coins and I need a lot of people to invest in this so that the price goes up and I can retire. Not for that reason, just because it's Bitcoin. And it's, it's actually a no-gov li no licensed coin. So, so it's, it's the true anarcho coin. So that's the coin, clearly. I mean, if you don't have Bitcoin, <laughs> Clear, clearly. you're not a real anarchist. Right, clearly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Clearly, oh, <laughs> clearly. But it is but it, it is interesting. It is interesting yeah. to watch this stuff, watch this stuff play out, and see how it's uh, see how it's yeah, going to work. You, you got to learn. Here, here's the learning crazy in thing. This world. Here's the crazy thing. Things are changing. The, the financial aspect, the currency aspect of blockchain, is just the tip of the iceberg. Just the very tip of the iceberg of of what's going to come because of this technology. We're, we're a couple of years or so away. Who knows? Maybe sooner with the way things are accelerating from quantum computing. When that thing gets unleashed, mm. oh gosh, that's a whole other. I, I I don't even know how to process it that yet, but it'll it'll make blockchain look like an abacus. So, right those 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 days are just around the corner. Make sure that you go to iState.tv regularly because I do update the site like daily. And you're going to go to that site and you're going to find a little fear porn. You know, we're, we're going to, you know, awareness. You, you got to know what's going on to a certain degree. But mostly what you're going to find are, are hopeful stories, stories of action. Because honestly, if you, if, you, if you step outside of the political realm, if you step outside of the, the news uh, fear porn realm, there is so much stuff happening around the world that's actually exciting and hopeful. I mean, yeah, there's good stuff happening every day. There's technological breakthroughs left and right. It's amazing. On a daily basis, I, I could find three or four incredible stories of, of some technological breakthrough. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, stuff is happening really, really, really fast. These... These 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 governments around the world, they're galvanizing in their efforts to try to figure out 
how to manage the blockchain, how to manage cryptocurrencies, how to manage social media. Meanwhile, there's stuff underneath that that's starting to emerge that's way beyond crypto, you know, well, I won't say cryptocurrency, but way beyond where cryptocurrency is right now, way beyond the blockchain, way beyond social media and how we use it today. There's stuff right. emerging. So Well, and and the beautiful part, the beautiful part of that is that these advances are taking place at such a fast rate that it doesn't leave government any time to react. So what they're reacting to, what they're reacting to right now is something from nine years ago. So right. you can only imagine what's coming out right now is going to take the government a decade for them to catch up and say, okay, this is something that we should watch or monitor or try to get into or try to squash or, or whatever the case may be. And then the other point is their zeal, their zeal to try to control, to, to, to regulate, to manage what they see, what they understand, is, is driving people away from those platforms towards the more underground and advanced platforms i what's going on in in germany with the laws they passed where suddenly now big social has to manage its content basically they have to do the job of censorship for the german government and if they don't they can face fines of 50 million dollars or more the, the I don't think it's going to be long before Twitter and Facebook and the rest are going to leave. That'll be the they'll be done in Germany, and the Germans they're going to be using uh, alternative means to communicate with one another, and it's going to be using mesh networks, using much more encrypted, right. uh, decentralized social media de networks, decentralized yeah. networks, blockchain social media. I mean, even Mark Zuckerberg is talking about, well, how do we incorporate blockchain into Facebook? <laughs> so he's already starting to look into that. So, oh, anyway, we're going to end it here. You got anything else to say? No, sounds good. I think it's a good ending. We're about six yeah. minutes over, which is fine. Uh, this is Paul Gordon of, uh, well, let me, let me, let me do a couple house coat keeping things here real quick. Make sure that you tune in tomorrow. On well, you'll find the link on uh, our Facebook page on iState TV uh, tomorrow, twelve thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time for headlines you may have missed. Tomorrow night on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, you will see is Daily Thursday with myself and Lou Sander from the Freedom Fiends, who's the co-host on Thursday here, and we'll be talking about. The shorter leash, the longer leash, and off the leash. And if you want to get archives of this show and the archives, you'll see, you'll get access to, you'll see the Facebook video embedded, you'll see the YouTube video version, and you'll also see, or you can also just listen to the audio archive as well. You can go to isdaily.live and that'll take you to a page on iState.tv that has all the archives of the show. So on that note, well, I'll see you tomorrow uh, in the afternoon and in the evening and Niz and I will see you ne next Wednesday, right? Next That's Wednesday, right. Wednesday on Is Daily Wednesday. Oh, and pitch your show before we leave. Right, and uh, don't forget, Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern on LRN.FM, The Torchwood Report. Myself and Mr. Matthew Taylor talk about stuff. Stuff.